Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to get on the F7 cylinder. I'm going to I'm going to pull the top end off. Uh, like I said, the when I started it up before, it sounded kind of loose, so I want to take that off uh, and do some measuring and see if I need anything. And if I do, at least I've got some time to try to find what I need. Uh, this stuff, the pistons and rings are just really difficult to find for uh, these older Kawasaki's, probably even some of the later model ones. They just didn't make as many as the Yamahas and Suzuki's. So we're just, uh, we've just got to get in there and measure and you know, you're just going to have to wait until something pops up or, or dig a little deeper trying to find them. So let's get over there and We'll open it up and see what we got. Okay, we've got it over here on the bench. And again, I, I apologize. I'm having to work from a tripod here. So my, my other space right now is taken up by the uh, DT2MX. So that's why I'm over here. I just, we're not tearing this all the way down. We're just... Uh, we just want to take the top end off to see what we need to do, if anything. Uh, I'm able to find gaskets, uh, lower end gaskets, uh, cylinder gasket. The upper one, I believe, is copper, so I can reuse it, hopefully. And we just need to concentrate on measuring things, seeing if everything looking okay in there, and uh, getting pistons and rings if we need them. So we'll just start by taking the head bolts out here. I don't think this engine has ever been torn apart. I can't find any other than a side cover maybe off, you know, evidence of it. Yep, looks like a copper one. And looks like that we've, you can see here where the dust is piled up and here. And uh, you can see the wetness all the way out here on the uh, gasket. So that tells me that we don't have a good seal here. So the only thing we can do on these is, is anneal these and put them back on. But before we do that, we'll be checking the flatness of the cylinder and the flatness of the uh, head here. And again, you can see this moisture, you know, the oil, all the way out here. So it uh, definitely has a problem with uh, the flatness. So we'll be taking a look at that. Okay, take a look at what we've got here. Looks like quite a bit of space down here between the cylinder and the top of the piston. Uh, that's not, I mean, it, that is, uh, certainly happens because the top of the piston is uh, smaller than the bottom, the skirt area. But everything's Looking pretty good, other than there's a little rust over here on this side. I think you can see. Not bad. But it did run. So, let's uh, see if we can get the cylinder off now. Okay, got my little crowbar here. And I'm just going to get underneath the exhaust port. There. Lift up a little bit. Okay, that's broke loose. And let's get back here and stay away from the fins. Just to there. Just back at the very inside part of the fin. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. 
Okay. Well, looks like it was oiling good, but I did notice that when we were looking at the cylinder, um, this side is a little dark around over here. I'll show it to you better when uh, I can get over underneath the light. Look at the other side here. Actually looks pretty good. Just been setting a long time, I believe. All right. Let me get some uh, cloth or some rag stuff down in there. See if we can get a keeper out here. Let me get some tools. Okay, get this keeper around here in one of the slots so I can get a hold of the end of it. There we go. see if the pin's going to come out or if it's going to need to be pulled. Okay, I've got my puller set up here. It's not in there very tight, but or it's not right now. It's coming out. Just I'm not even using a wrench. Just hand pressure. There we go. Just had that up there to keep the piston from hitting the Two cylinder studs there in front. Looks really clean, except for my fingers. Okay, don't feel a ridge or anything. Like I say, the whole thing pulled out of there just uh, with fingertip pressure on the puller. No wrench was used, so it's probably okay. <clears throat> so I'm not sure how much you can see there, but. Uh, you're always going to have little side to side movement. Well, we'll do a little more investigating on it, but I think it's probably all right. We'll get the book out and see what the clearances are supposed to be. Okay, I was wrong about it not being taken apart. 
I don't know what's better. So it's half millimeter over already. Good thing I didn't pick up a half millimeter over piston. I saw one of those. So if we need it, we're going to have to go to a millimeter. So this, it really, this tells me quite a bit that it was really sealing well. It just depends on whether or not uh, they bored it, uh, you know, close or uh, a little loose or whatever. And there's actually very little, uh, looks like dirt indigestion or anything like that. I don't see a lot of scoring or streaking or anything, but there's no, you know, the only thing I wire brushed was the top, just to see here. And, you know, you see a little bit of brown here, but not much. So it was sealing well. The only thing that I saw in the cylinder was a little bit on the uh, magneto side. You can see a little blacking there. So that tells me that maybe we were leaking a little bit at the seal. A little bit on the other side too. And we get that little bit of rust up there, but that just was probably from setting. Uh, not seeing any scoring at the top or anything like that, or a ridge. So let me wipe that out. We'll give it a measure and we'll see what, uh, see what we're looking at. Okay. Let's give it a measure here. And they're telling me to measure at about five millimeters from the bottom of the skirt. Two point four three seven. Okay. And you're actually supposed to measure, uh, they show several different places. I'm just going to do a down and dirty here just to see, uh, just, just above the ex exhaust port. That's kind of how I usually do it. I'll show you in a minute how they want you to measure and that's what we'll do. Try it one more time just to make sure we're getting a good reading here. Okay, two point four four three. Okay, so six thousandths right there. That's way over. Let me get you in the book here. Um, like I say, they want, they're wanting you to measure in A, B, C, and D and then you compare all those and none of them should be uh, off more than four ten thousandths or 0 0.01 millimeter. And on the, let's see, F7 piston clearance right here. Ooh, that crap off my fingers. Okay, you're, they want you to have two and a half thousandths or 0 0.064 millimeter. And I'm measuring at about six thousandths. So we're definitely in need of a, a rebore here. And it's really sad. I have a feeling it was put up, uh, 
It was probably bored too loose, the piston fit was, because there's there's just nothing. You know, there's one little score right there. It it may have eaten some dirt, but you just really don't see much of it. You know, I don't see a lot of evidence of it. And it was sealing okay, like I said, but we're gonna have to look for a, a, a millimeter over in order to do this. And uh, again, they're wanting you to measure here at the diameter of the skirt at the uh, position five millimeter from the bottom. So that's what they're talking about right here. That's what they're wanting you to check for. Now, if I, if I check the, uh, the bore at the bottom, I'm about two thousandths closer. So I've already done that. I'm going to go ahead and set my uh, dial bore gauge up, and I'm going to do I'm going to do this reading here, so we're right on the money. But I can tell you right now, with with six thousandths clearance, uh, and it's supposed to be two and a half, uh, I'm sure that's beyond the tolerance. Okay, let's take a look here at the piston cylinder a little bit closer. Uh, first of all, they're telling me they want to check this piston at, at five millimeters, okay, five millimeters right here, below or above the uh, skirt of the piston, so right about there. So let's, uh, let's just give that a pretty close mark here. This is a little closer to the bottom than most of the ones I do. Most of them are about three-eighths to half. So they're wanting a little extra down here, I think. I just want to look real quick. Okay, right at the very top. I'm at 61, let's call it 6160. Uh, I'm going to write that down, can't remember. And down at that place, 6187. So, uh, That's 0.27, let's see, I was, yeah, that's millimeters. So 0.27 millimeters. Uh, let's see here. Ah. So about 10, Ten and a half thousandths is the the difference between the top of the piston and the bottom. The top's always going to be smaller because the spark plug is is uh, firing there. It's a bigger mass. It takes longer for it to swell up, but when it swells up, it swells up more than the bottom. So all your your real Intense heat is right here. So once it gets up the temperature, it's going to get bigger. That's why it's 10,000 smaller. And if you measured this on a, on a new piston, I'm sure it's more than that. Because usually they do run between 10 and 15 from my experience. Okay. So it wants us to measure it at 5 millimeters below the, the bottom of the skirt. And I'm just about straddling that with my micrometer. Okay, so we're at uh, 2.437. 2.3 or 2.437, yes. Okay, let me jot that one down. 
And uh, let me go over and set my bore gauge up to exactly that. Okay, I've got my bore gauge set up to exactly the 2.437. Okay, let's first just take a look at uh, the very upper edge of the bore. That's where there should not be any wear, really. Hoping there's, you're not getting glare off that gauge. Okay, if we go to right at the very upper part, I'm getting about, let's see, it's about one in seven ten thousand, or no, yeah, one in seven ten thousandths. So if you slide that right down just a little bit, okay, we're we're just a little below that, and we're already at three and three ten thousandths. Let me slide down a little more. Okay, there's five and three ten thousandths. And I'm st I still am not to the exhaust port. Okay, there, that is five and seven ten thousandths. And now we're at eight or no, uh, six, six and three ten thousand, two ten thousands. And it just keeps getting worse. And there I just fell into the exhaust port. Now what what they want you to do, I mean this is that's good enough check for me. Uh, this one ain't gonna it ain't gonna live the way it is. But what Kawasaki wants you to do is they want you to take uh, four readings above the exhaust and intake port. Otherwise, you take say two right here or one right here and then down a little bit, and then you turn the cylinder 90 degrees and you get one at the upper and one at the lower. And then they want you to do the same down here. You do one here, then one a little bit lower, and then you turn it and you get one there and a little bit lower. And what they tell you is, uh, let's see, it's eight points in all, I believe is what they say. Yeah, eight points in all. And then if the maximum wear exceeds six thousandths, which ours did, and we didn't even have to do that, uh, or if the difference in the inside diameter between any two points is over two thousandths, then you must bore and hone and replace the cylinder or replace the cylinder. And this again is what they're telling you. They, well, let me get you a little closer here. Okay. They're wanting you to do the two A's here and the two B's, that's above the in intake and exhaust, and then two at C and two at D. And those are below those, those ports. And if, if maximum wear exceeds six thousandths or, one, or point one five millimeter, 
or the difference in the inside diameter between any two points is over two thousandths or 0 0.05 millimeter, then bore, hone, and or replace the cylinder. Okay, uh, again, I think I showed you this earlier. Uh, they're wanting you to measure the piston at five millimeter from the bottom of the skirt and you're measuring the bore. It, and what they're telling you is to do this and if you have any of the indications that we had, uh, you're gonna have to, to repair it. And now when we go, when we, when we bore or whatever we're gonna do to this, we're gonna measure, once we bore and hone, we'll measure from say a, a half inch or so. It doesn't really matter. It can be anywhere in the bore, but I usually do it up here. And then measure at the piston where it tells you to measure, right here. And that's all because of the, uh, the growing, the, the swelling of the piston from, as it heats up from the engine running. So otherwise, it at first is not gonna be all that tight up here, but as it grows, it will be. So they're wanting you to measure down here where the piston is the biggest. So we'll measure here and anywhere in the bore on a fresh bore. And at that point, they're gonna want you to have, in this case, two and a half thousandths on the F7-175 or .064 millimeter. So when we bore or whatever we're gonna do, that's what we'll have to check for. And that's usually what I do. Uh, the only difference really is where the manufacturer wants you to measure the piston from. You know, uh, if, you measure, if you measure the piston, you really need to know that. If you don't know it, you need to assume that it, you're gonna check down here. And what I normally do is if I don't know where they want me to check, then I'll check at a half inch. And that, that kind of splits the difference on, uh, on a lot of them. Uh, this one here is the lowest to the bottom that I've ever, ever encountered in the book. But I, I would measure normally about right there. Uh, some of them tell you, most of them tell you three eighths to half inch. And in, if you're trying not to get a seizure or something like that, I always like to go on the tight side, but if you're doing it for somebody else, you, you've got to keep it more towards the middle because you don't know how they're gonna uh, go right out and you know they may start the thing up and run it 9,000 RPM for 30 minutes. And the engine's not gonna live at that. You've got to break it in, uh, especially if you're on the tight side. But anyhow, uh, on this one, five millimeter uh, above the, the skirt. That's where they want you to check. Now, the, the one thing that I'm running into is that the pistons are very hard to find. Uh, I may have one. I uh, had a gentleman tell me that uh, the KDX or K, KD, I don't know, KD or whatever, uh, pistons are the same. And I don't know that for a fact. I took the chance and went ahead and ordered one in one millimeter over. This is a 50 or a, a half millimeter. But in lieu of that, I actually, I, we can do this another way and it's kind of the reverse of what most people would do is I was able to find another cylinder and this one is a standard bore. And it uh, just roughly, Sixty, 
I'm getting about 61.30 at the top. And I believe that uh, 61.50, yeah, 61.50 at the bottom. So that's where the least amount of wear is going to be. So I believe 61.50 is the standard bore. Let me look that up real quick. Okay, yes. Uh, 175 F7. Uh, 61.5 by 58.8 so 6150 is the standard bore for this engine so this one if the piston that I'm that I ordered and I actually I didn't have to pay a lot for it I think it was around 50 bucks and uh, that's I say I didn't have to pay a lot for it most pistons that you find if you're not working on a Yamaha, uh, they're probably going to be closer to $100. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So there's nothing wrong with this piston. I can't find any cracks or anything like that on it. So we can bore this cylinder to accept the used piston. And I was able to find a set of rings for this. So that, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to measure this and see if we can get by with a standard. I'm sure that that's not the case, but uh, I'm going to work. I'm going to do that. Uh, let me kind of uh, start that project. I'll get my bore gauge and everything set up, and we'll look at this one. Okay, I went ahead and did the measurement as they uh, as they want you to measure. And this is what I came up with. Uh, so we're really pretty good everywhere except here. And uh, this one's borderline. Uh, it tells you that if the, uh, the difference in the inside diameter between any two points is over two thousandths or 0 0.05 millimeter, then you've got to bore it. And we are here. Uh, the rest of them are pretty close. I think you could probably, you know, who knows? I don't have a standard piston right now to, uh, to compare. But it's uh, by going with the standard bore and measuring what I measured and adding the two point or two and a half thousandths for your clearance. Uh, that's the only one that I see a problem with. But uh, I, just, I just don't think there's any use in trying to do that. You could probably get by, but, you know, getting by isn't always the right thing. Let me kind of show you why, what I'm saying that. Number one, there's quite a bit of rust in there. Now it's, I'm not seeing any pitting, but there is quite a bit of rust. But theoretically, you might be able to do it. But I would want that piston in hand to make sure. We've got... Yeah. This, this is a very low miles uh, engine. I can actually... I don't know that you can see it, but I can. Uh, the crosshatch still in the cylinder there. But I think it's going to need a, a bore to clean it up. That I just don't like doing that. Uh, to hone one, even though it's close, uh, if it's been if it's got any miles on it at all, it needs to be a fresh bore. So that's probably what we're going to do. Uh, I've, I, like I said, I've actually got a one millimeter piston coming for this cylinder. This one's, al this one's already at uh, a half a millimeter. This one is a stock one. So we can put this piston in it. We can bore it to fit that one. Just like you, you could with a new one. So everything 
we have two avenues we can go with. Uh, I may just go ahead, depending on what uh, I decide to do, go ahead and bore the other one and fit it too and probably just sell it. But it'll be ready to go. So I think this is what we're going to do. We're probably just going to go with this one and bore it to uh, the half millimeter over. That way this, this cylinder has got life left in it. Okay, now we're going to check the, the rod play, uh, the up and down, which is what they're calling the radial. And then we'll do the big end side clearance. I've got, kind of got this partially set up. Uh, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure the crank can't rotate. I just take a screwdriver and put down here and just give it a little tap. And that keeps, uh, keeps it locked in place so you don't have that rotating. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to push this rod all to one side because if you allow this to happen, you're not going to get a good reading. So you push it all the way to the side, and then we'll zero it out. You don't want to push a lot of pressure on it. Just, uh, just keep it from moving, and then move it up and down. We've got just a little deflection, but nothing really to read. This is... Um, Uh, two lines. This is one thousandths. <clears throat> Otherwise, if we're if we've got this pushed over to the one side, and uh, from here to that line, the, that's a half thousandths. This is a thousandths, and then we're down to five here. real touchy. Okay. I'm not seeing anything there. and I'm moving it up and down. And for the uh, radial clearance on these, it's uh, F6 and F7 is 9 ten thousandths or 0 .024 millimeter. And you know, we don't even have a, uh, even a half thousand there, so we're good. We're good at, uh, on our radial. So you just pull our screwdriver out and uh, get rid of our indicator. Now, the next thing they want you to check is this uh, radial play. And I've actually gone down in here already and checked. You just go between the, the rod and the thrust washer or the rod and the, or the, or the thrust washer and the crank, but this is the easiest way to get in there, right there. So that's a good tight 18 thousandths or 0.46 millimeter. What are we supposed to have? Uh, big in, side clearance, 15 thousandths or 0.38 millimeter. So we are a little loose there. Uh, but the repair limit is 24 thousandths to 60, 0.60 millimeters. You know, this, this is what they're wanting. If you're setting up a brand new crank, that's what they want. But you don't have to repair it until it exceeds this number. So it says measure the side clearance with a thickness gauge, and that's all we got here, feeler gauge. If it exceeds, exceeds the repair limit, replace side washers with new ones. And if you were going to do that, you'd want to just go ahead and replace the bearing too. But we're okay. We're at 18 thousandths, just a little bit. We're three thousandths above the, uh, the clearance that they want for a new one to be set up at. So we're okay on both the radial and the side clearance on the rod. 
So that shouldn't be an issue to us as far as uh, needing to find parts to rebuild that. And it, it doesn't feel rough or anything like that. Now the bearing, side bearings may, I hear a little bit of something in there, but I don't believe it's the uh, rod bearing. But we won't know until we, we get it apart. Okay guys, there you have it. Uh, we did the, uh, the tear down inspection. We kind of know what to expect from our top end. Looks like the crank's probably going to be okay. Uh, sounds like maybe I've got a bearing that needs uh, some attention, uh, but it's a main bearing, not a crank bearing. And of course seals. Uh, we've got an, a way to fix the top end, although it is uh, kind of unconventional. Uh, most people, like I say, they, and I do it too, replace uh, the piston with an oversized piston. In this case, we're going to probably replace the cylinder with a undersized cylinder to the, the piston. Otherwise, uh, it's a standard bore. We're going to go ahead and bore it to the half millimeter over. That will allow us another overbore on that cylinder. I was kind of lucky to find that one. Price wasn't too bad. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, there just aren't as many Kawasaki parts out there. there. There wasn't as many motorcycles made to start with, and consequently, there just wasn't as many parts, and they have since dried up. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, Yamaha stuff out there, uh, quite a bit of Suzuki, but that's starting to go to the wayside too. So this, working on these, uh, I had a guy, <laughs> had a guy not too long ago, had watched uh, Flip Fix and was, and he was over there doing the uh, bridge stones. And one guy suggested, wouldn't it really be cool if you did one of the bridge stones? And yeah, it would, I'd love to do it. But there are almost nothing for parts for those. I, you know, it, it's hard enough finding them for a Kawasaki or even some of the other bikes, some of the other parts that we're needing. But to go in with uh, that kind of a crutch already, uh, and I know the Bridgestones, if they're over, if, if they're wore out bores, I'm almost for sure they're a chrome bore and you can't bore them. So you're stuck with Probably in these days, getting the chrome removed and Nicosil put on, I think is probably what they would do. But I don't know that. So anyhow, it's uh, kind of a dilemma on some of this stuff. But I wanted to make sure that I got ahead, went ahead and got these measurements so I would have some time to find parts. And that's what I'm working on now. So I don't know how fast this project's going to go. So... Uh, Anyway, hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.